Hello everyone. Welcome to Gnananidhi. In this video, we will learn about the evolution of MPLS right from IP routing to the currently trending segment routing. Let us begin. Traditionally, routing of packets were based on longest prefix match of the destination IP address. Basically, IGP protocols like OSPF or ISIS was used to advertise the state of the nodes and links in the network. As they are link state protocols, every node in the network knew about every other node or connected links and therefore all the nodes in the network had same network database and also it computed routes for every other node in the network. So if we consider the example of a packet with 10.10.33.100 as the destination IP address which is injected at router 1, the node performs the longest prefix match by looking at its routing table which is populated through IGPs. And operation is performed between the destination IP address and the IP mask. The resultant is looked into the table for the match. In our case, for the first entry 10.10.33.100 is masked with 29 and checked against the first entry. It doesn't match. Then it is masked with slash 24 and checked against the second entry. Further, it is masked with slash 24 and checked against the third entry. Here, it is a hit. There is a match. And the corresponding next hop, which is 10.10.0.21, is selected for packet forwarding. IP routing uses longest prefix match to decide on the next hop. It means that if we had another entry, say, with slash 29, and the network address being 10.10.33.96, then our search would have further gone down in the table till the longest prefix match is hit. This operation is performed by every router in the network and for every packet that enters a router. And to get the IP address, we need to decode till the layer 3 header. So overall, it is a costly operation to be performed in the core routers. This led to further development of technologies which aimed at comparatively efficient transmissions like MPLS. MPLS technique uses a label to route and forward the packets. Here, every router advertises the label which is ideally an integer number to be used by the packets to reach that particular node. LDP, which is the label distribution protocol, is used to distribute the labels to the nodes in the network. So as we can see here, node 3 advertises 300 to be the label to be used for reaching it or its directly connected nodes. And node 2 advertises its local label to be 200 to reach node 3's network. So in the LFIB of node 2, it stores something like this. If the packet with incoming label 200 reaches node 2, then it needs to swap with 300 and send it out on the outgoing interface connected between 2 and 3, which in fact is the interface on which a label of 300 was received. Similarly, all the nodes in the network populates its LFIP, which is the label forwarding information base. So with LDP and MPLS in picture, only the LERs, which are the label edge routers, perform the IP table lookup and determines the label to be used and pushes the label onto the packet and sends it out. Further, all the nodes in the network just uses the LFIP to look at the label value and swap or pop the label accordingly. So with this technology, we have eliminated the longest prefix match lookup of the IP table on every router and also the MPLS label is placed in the shim header and we don't have to decode the L3 header or look at the destination IP address at each router. Hence, this is more efficient than the traditional IP routing. This was all good, but we could see that with this technology, the links closer to the destination IP were more congested. So for better utilization of the resources, we wanted to engineer the network and the traffic and thus evolved RSVP-TE. RSVP 
is a resource reservation protocol. And with RSVP TE, we can engineer our traffic streams and ask for how much resources we need and the path that we need our LSP to traverse. Basically, all the link characteristics like bandwidth availability, admin groups, SRLGs, etc. will be advertised by the IGPs. And this info is available on all the nodes. On the node 1, PCE or CSPF, the constraint shortest path first module would use a modified Dijkstra's algorithm considering the bandwidth requirements for the LSP and compute the path which would satisfy the requirements using the TED, which is the Traffic Engineer Database. Advertised by the IGPs, the computed path is represented in the form of an ERO, which is Explicit Route Object, which has the information of the nodes and the links the LSP or the traffic need to traverse. This ERO object is carried in the RSVP path message along the LSP path. The resources are checked for the availability, which in most cases will be available unless there are numerous LSPs being set up in the network and some LSP has come and occupied the resources chosen by this LSP in that intermittent time period of CSPF path computation and signaling of the LSP. Once the path message reaches node 3, then the node sends out resume message which has a label which has the label to be used by the LSP. Once the resv message reaches the head end, what we essentially have is a unidirectional LSP set up to receive the traffic from node 3 to node 1. If we want the traffic to be forwarded from node 1 to node 3, then another unidirectional LSP need to be set up. As we know, RSVP is a receiver initiated protocol. This was all okay and better than traditional MPLS LDP LSPs as we were able to engineer the LSP paths and therefore would provide QoS services to customer traffic and also make best use of the network resources. But we needed more. So came the MPLS TP. MPLS TP essentially in most of the cases GMPLS stands for generic MPLS. In the first place, it made the LSPs bidirectional. Though it used RSVP TE as the signaling protocol, it used the labels in both path and resv messages and resources were reserved and programmed in both the directions. The LSP path or the ERO is of course still computed by the CSPF engine on the head end. As we can see, labels 201 and 301 is advertised in the path message and 300 and 200 is advertised in the resume message programming the underlying LFIP tables. Most importantly, the G in the GMPLS stands for generic. So this technology is not just used for packet networks but also for optical networks using TDM or DWDM technologies. In case of TDM or DWDM, the label maps to the exact physical resource like say if a wavelength of 193.5 terahertz is used for transmission of traffic then the label that will be used is the generalized label which is of value 193.5 terahertz which is advertised in the path and resume messages and the underlying hardware or the rodem cards is also programmed to wavelength 193.5 terahertz. This is all okay, but if you can realize by now, there is a lot of state information we are storing with RSVP. Every node stores the information regarding the LSPs traversing, resources or the links used. And if the LSPs are still alive or if there are any stale LSPs that has to be removed. So all the state information is stored at every router in the network. So this was a bit of a overload or overhead at every router in the network. So then came the segment routing to get away with the state storage at every router in the network. Segment routing 
completely eliminates the need to store the LSP state information and also it completely eliminates the need to have a signaling protocol like RSVP or LDP. So the core funda is that similar to PCE or CSPF modules in the MPLS TP, here also we would have a separate module to compute the path that need to be traversed by the LSP. But they are not indicated by the node IPs or labels. Instead, we have something called SID or the segment identifiers. We have a globally unique node SID or a locally significant adjacency SID. Adjacency SIDs are used for traffic engineered LSPs. Once every node comes up with its SIDs, this information is advertised by IGPs. I repeat, the labels here, which are SIDs, are advertised by the IGPs like OSPF or ISIS and not any signaling protocol. So all the nodes in the network have the information on the SIDs of the nodes in the network and also how to reach to that SID. Once the head end computes on the SIDs to be used by an LSP to reach a specific destination, like in this case, PCE gives the label stack with SID2 and adjacency SID of 301. Further, packets are forwarded based on the SID information. There is no state information regarding the LSPs stored on the network. So with SR, signaling protocols are eliminated and SR is what the big networking companies are developing currently for both IPv4 and IPv6 networks. So we need to wait and see for the next advancement and the next big, big technology evolution that is going to happen after segment routing. Hope this video helped in understanding the evolution from IP routing to segment routing. If you think the content provided in this video is helpful, do like the video and also suggest your feedback or queries in the comments. I will be happy to improve and provide answers for the same. Do let me know if there is any specific technology or area in networking which you would want to explore more. Thank you so much for watching till the end. See you in the next video soon.